God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Today we're holding a service of thanksgiving for our annual Africa Sunday. And so I want to begin today by talking about the power of gratitude, the power of thanksgiving. When we give thanks, we focus on what we have. We focus on what we see. We focus on what we hear, touch, taste. We don't focus on what we don't have. So when we give thanks, we become more fully present to ways in which our lives are blessed by God. Giving thanks jolts us awake to our own aliveness. It changes our will with new possibilities offered to us in life. Gratitude for the gift of life is the wellspring of our faith. It's the source of all true art. It ignites energy. Giving thanks is a choice that we can make at any and every moment. Try, for example, walking the labyrinth with prayers of thanksgiving in your heart. See what opens up for you as you do that. To give thanks is not dependent on external circumstances. Things don't have to meet our approval or be just to our liking for gratitude to kick in, strong and real. Indeed, moments where we're feeling discontent and frustrated, they can be the best times for deliberately choosing to change our mindset by focusing on giving thanks instead. Further, and very important for our day, giving thanks is subversive to consumer society. 21st century capitalism strives for growth in corporate profits. It conditions us to acquire, but also to keep on feeling insufficient so that we keep on acquiring. In such a political economy, gratitude is even a revolutionary act. In the Eucharist, the word Eucharist, by the way, of course, means thanksgiving. In the Eucharist, we give thanks to God for our creation, for our redemption, for the power of forgiveness, for our preservation. And we commit ourselves anew to live no more for ourselves, but for him who calls us out of darkness, out of selfishness, into his marvellous light the light of hope, the light of faith, the light of love which we see in Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, I believe God is speaking very clearly to us today. And I believe the message is in some ways so clear that we miss it because our lives and our world have become so noisy, so busy, so complicated. I believe God is today calling us back to Jesus Christ, to the message of Jesus Christ as good news for the salvation of the world. Come back to Jesus Christ. Put Jesus Christ first in your life. Realize that very often you're making yourself only more miserable by running faster and faster in the world. We're living in a time of multiple crises. We can't answer the world's problems. There are so many and they're so complicated. Rather, what I think we need today is a new vision of our humanity. Rediscovering, or indeed discovering for the first time, what it means to be human. And we do that 
by returning to Jesus Christ. Because in Jesus Christ, we see a human being made in the image of God, reflecting the creative and the redemptive love of God. We human beings, we know in our bones that we're made for each other. We're made to look after and shape our world. We're made to worship the one in whose image we were made. The story of the Bible tells again and again what human history tells us, that human beings get it wrong. Looking at the world today, we see a 21st century version of the doctrine of original sin. The me, me, me generation. We're all taking something out, but what are we actually giving back? It's a retelling over and over again, the story of Genesis chapter 3. My brothers and sisters, our task as image-bearing, God-loving, Christ-shaped, spirit-filled Christians is to follow Jesus Christ and to shape our world with the love of God, with values of love, with respect for each and every person and all of life. Values of forgiveness, generosity of the spirit, walking the extra mile, turning the other cheek. Our job today, the church's job, the job of every Christian person is to announce God's redemption to a world that has discovered its fallenness to announce God's healing to a world that has discovered its brokenness, to pronounce God's love and trust to a world that knows only too well exploitation, fear and suspicion. Martin Luther had a definition of sin which was very simple. He said, sin is where humans are turned in on themselves. Sin is where humans are turned in on themselves. And it's good to ask ourselves this morning, is my life turned in on myself? Do I spend my waking hours mostly planning, organizing, arranging, furthering my own agenda? Is my life circling around my own personal ambitions and desires? Or is it centered on the love of God and the love of neighbor? The Bible tells us we were made in the image of God and called to be God's light in the world. Jesus modeled the life God intends for his people preaching grace and peace to the poor, to the powerless, to the marginalized, to those on the edge. And he had warnings, he had severe warnings for the loud, the rich and the complacent. He became a cross bearer, sharing and bearing the pain and puzzlement of our world so that the crucified love of God in Christ may bring healing and forgiveness. So too, you and I, when we're walking with Jesus, are called to be salt and light in the world. And that will mean that we find ourselves sharing and bearing the pain of others. That means at times we will share the confusion of our generation at what is happening because we are called to be the presence of God at the very place where the world is in pain. To stand in prayer, in groans and sighs too deep for words, to share tears of loss, so that the quiet music of the cross might be sung softly at the place of pain so that a glimmer of light may hail the possibility of a new day dawning. How do we be light for the world? We need to come back to Jesus Christ. 
and find there our belovedness as daughters and sons of the living God. Discover that we are cracked vessels, but yes, full of God's grace. We are wounded healers. With Jesus Christ with us, we seek new ways to be human, engaging in life-giving activities, heart-opening prayer and contemplation, acting out of love and out of grace and out of creativity, using our faith to engage in something bigger than just my life. And that'll mean different things for each of us. And that's the power of the Christian faith. Because we're all lighting a light in our corner of the world. And that might mean teaching a child extra help after school. It might mean sponsoring a girl's education in Africa, or helping build a well, or planting trees on small holdings. It might help in seeking housing for the homeless, or meaningful work for the jobless. In significant ways, our lives are called to be different. Our priorities are called to be different. We need to refine ourselves as God's children, living in the kingdom of God. William, Wil William Wilberforce introduced legislation into the British Parliament to end the slave trade in 1779, when he first introduced his bill, he was shouted down and laughed at, even by the Church of England bishops. He was ridiculed and he was ostracised from polite society, who pointed to the Bible and say, there, there's slavery in the Bible, it must be all right. But William Wilberforce continued to lobby on the basis that his Christian faith told him that slavery is an abomination in the light of God. Year after year, for 28 years, from 1779 until 1807, William Wilberforce lobbied tirelessly for the end of the slave trade. By 1807, after 28 years, public opinion had changed and his bill was passed. But William, William Wilberforce continued to argue, not just for the end of slavery, not just for the end of the slave trade, but for the end of slavery itself. And that indeed happened in the British Empire in 1833, just a few days before his death. My brothers and sisters, the, challenging, the challenges we're facing today are at least as great as that, if not greater. We live in a time of great challenge. And I believe, I hope, I see with the eyes of faith that this too will be an age of waking up. Waking up to the fact that we are all deeply interconnected and interdependent on one another, on nature, and on all of God's creation. When we act out of love, instead of out of greed or self-centeredness, then we change something for the better in our world. Even when we have a lo kind, loving thought, or a generous gesture, however small, it changes something in our world. Our lives are part of something bigger, something that's unfolding. It's what Jesus called the kingdom of God, the revelation of the love of God. Will you be a part of it? Will you be at the forefront of this movement of the love of God in our day? Even if people close to you in your own family shout you down and laugh at you, if polite society ridicules you and ostracizes you, will you stand up for the love of God for all people equally and for God's entire creation? I believe the tide is turning. Will we turn again to Jesus Christ and be part of God's great awakening?
in the pandemic, people got into the habit of saying, I wish you good health. Most important, wish you good health. Charles Dickens wrote in one of his books, good health is good, but wisdom is better. We need today wisdom. Small but significant symbolic acts can speak more than many words. Here at St George's, we marked this time of pandemic with a new prayer and meditation labyrinth to help people to recenter their lives. Let us learn in our lives to be symbol makers and storytellers for the kingdom of God. Let us learn to model true humanness in our work in this age's addiction to money and fast travel. Nurture humanness in our relationships. Model genuine human kindness as a sign and invitation to those around you. It will involve clear speech sometimes, such as Jesus had in today's gospel, declaring those who persist in dehumanizing and destructive ways of going about their human tasks, that they are calling down destruction on themselves and on their world. If only you had known, said Jesus, the things that make for peace, for justice, for good stewardship, for love, for regaining trust. We live in a time when what we say, what we do, how we live, really, really, really matters. Let us return to Jesus Christ and find in him the source of hope and salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We keep a minute or two of quiet together and then Evelyn is going to sing for us. <laughs>